Hey, Spin enthusiasts. So I got some new wearable tech. What do you think about it? My hope is that this is going to improve the sound quality in my videos, especially when I'm like in here where it echoes. I don't know. We'll see. Today, I'm going to teach you a little bit more technique on rifle. This is something I've had a lot of requests for over time, and I just haven't gotten around to doing it, mostly because rifle is like my weakest piece of equipment, and I really want to show you how to do it right. I don't want you to see me like failing all over myself and then messing it up and then you not learn it correctly. I don't really care that I'm bad since I'm not a performer anymore. When I was a performer, I worked my tail off to be as good as possible at rifle. But I don't perform anymore, and it's important to keep my skills up, but I also have only so much time that I can ever practice. So I spend a lot of my time with my flag, my saber, and especially my dancing. So my poor rifle kind of gets the shaft. In order to set it up for a good toss, you need to have a good prep into the toss. And what I generally do to teach a good prep into a toss is we do something called a 5-7 setup. So you start with your rifle in right flat, and you push down and you do four spins. One, two, three, four. Then as you come to this fourth spin, you're gonna catch it in a left flat stop on count five. This is the five part of the five seven setup name. You hold count six and then you prep on count seven in a quarter dip. Now there's a lot of argument about technique on rifle tosses. When do you do a quarter dip versus when you do a full dip versus when do you not dip at all? My philosophy for this is that I have one type of dip for every two tosses. So my singles and my doubles, I don't prep on. They just stay flat. Okay, sometimes when I'm teaching newbies, we do a quarter prep on a double just because they gotta learn how to get the double out. And then I do a quarter prep on my triple and my quad. And finally, I do a half to a full dip on my fives and my sixes. and full dip on anything above that. So since I'm in a quarter dip, that means I'm gonna kick out either a triple or a quad from this point. If I wanna release a triple, I'm gonna push down with my right hand and I'm going to bring my left hand up to my chin. I did a whole video on this earlier. So we're gonna go on and go to the higher tosses. If I want to release a quad, I'm gonna bring my hand a bit higher. I'm gonna push a little bit harder with my right hand and I'm gonna lift a little bit higher with my left hand. The general rule I use is shoulder for doubles, chin for triples, nose, and then if I can get it, a five would be at forehead level. But a lot of times when I'm working with my younger guards, which is the majority of the guards that I work with, we go shoulder for doubles, nose for triples, forehead to the top of the head for quads, and straight up arm for fives, because a five would be the highest we would toss. I know that when I marched core, straight up was it had to be at least a six, if not higher. But for my quarter dip, I'm going to push down really hard with my right hand, and then I'm gonna lift my left hand to my release point. Notice I'm going about my nose to my forehead, depending on if I'm a little more advanced or a little bit more beginner at this. Now one secret that you might not have heard before, a lot of instructors don't teach, and I don't know if they just don't know, or they don't believe it or what. But one of the secrets that I always like to teach to my kids that I figured out when I was marching is that if you breathe in on the prep and push your air out on the release, you'll get a better toss every time. You may have heard me actually doing that with my microphone as I was doing that toss. If I'm gonna do a half prep, think about it this way. If the rifle is a diameter of a circle, every time you turn it, it's gonna cover a certain portion of the circle. So going from flat, to this shoulder hip angle covers one quarter of the circle. So here is an eighth and down here it covers an eighth. So that's why it's called a quarter dip. If I wanna do a half prep, I'm gonna to have to take it from flat, parallel to the ground, to perpendicular to the ground, straight up and down. So my half prep would be boom. Now I can do that with a five, seven setup, just like my quarter dip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when I do my release, I'm going to release it higher. Now, top of the head, forehead region, versus if you're a beginner and you're tossing a five straight up, or if you're tossing something at six or higher, your arm is going to try and extend straight up in the air. Now, another way to get into a half prep, if you want, is to swing the gun down and switch your wrist 
and then bring it all the way around into that half breath. Sometimes I'll write that into the show and I'll put like feet with it. And also notice I give a little plie too, especially, especially if you're a beginner. You definitely want to plie on your prep because that is going to give you a little bit more momentum as you lift up and get that rifle out of your hand to get the five or the six out. Also, if you're having a hard time kicking out fives and sixes on a half dip, you might want to switch to a full dip. So, color guard physics again, going from parallel to the ground, here covers a quarter of the circle. So from here, we're covering half of the circle. The butt end covers a quarter here, the nose end covers a quarter here, hence why we call this a half dip. So then you're like, oh, how do we do a full dip? Like this? No, let's don't do that. You start with your rifle straight up and down. So now, this is your diameter, this is your beginning point. You take the rifle and you turn it all the way from here into your full dip. Notice my left elbow is basically straight. I tend to lock it out, do not do that. And my right hand is coming onto the gun and my forearm is parallel to the ground. This is a good one to add a plie. So I'm here and I plie. Notice though that when I plie, I'm not squatting like this. I'm not sticking my butt out, that looks awful. I'm taking my gun, I'm going from the straight up and down position to a plie position, my back is staying straight, my upper body just lowers onto my plie. My fives are super low, but the ceiling is also super low, so I'm trying really hard not to hit it. Hence the plie. So if your toss is low, don't hesitate to plie and try to catch it. It's so much better than just trying to lean forward and catch it. So that's today's video. Hopefully that helps you guys improve your rifle tosses, especially those high ones. Use all of your technique. Remember, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. If you really want to be good at tossing rifles and catching them, you need to be doing 100 tosses a day at every single level. Singles, doubles, triples, and so on. So really, really work those tosses and you're gonna get good at them. Just make sure you're watching out for all those bad habits, jumping underneath your toss, pitching your tosses, all those things. I go over that in so many other videos, so really, really work on your technique. If you have the right technique when you're practicing, you're gonna get good at it, I promise. That's it for today. Guys, like and share this video, and then make sure you share it with all your friends because Color Guard is so much more fun when you do it on a team. Let's <laughs> go.